Hello and welcome back to the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. And we're still on the last case of Justice for All. And we are going to go into the second half of the first part of the trial against the people versus Matt Ongal. So without further ado, let's continue where we last left off. In Act 2, Part 2 of Farewell, My Turnabout, already in front. March 22nd, 2.14 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Dude! I can't believe that Adrian! No way! Not cool at collecting Adrian Andrews! She is her manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The one person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So, after the ceremony during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your hakma. Hmm. Because she was the only one that came to wake me up. Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes. She is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Cordera. But why? I thought she was buzzed with one! She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of the day. Get me a very that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer G? Rio? You think her mo you think her motive is related to select impact missing suicide note? Right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact as her strength and reason. But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note. And the person thought to have hidden it. Is Juan Corira the victim of this murder? And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corira. All to get the suicide note back. That sounds possible. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' dependency issues with regard to Miss Impact. It looks like he's still 
the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. Two twenty five PM. Both will now reconvene now, Miss Lodge Wolf, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Huang Koida's room. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt Ungard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Uh, yes, sir. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Uh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I I've never even heard of Gossip Land! If the judge has ever prosecution witness, he do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was being Mr. Koira. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. There was a fry and bait matter. Or was that bait and fry? It reminds me of fish. But I... But I didn't... No one is accusing you of that. I think there's someone who said... I think someone who would beg to differ. <clears throat> I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well. Witness, please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. Well, she found the body. Mm -mm. Proceed, Samus. <laughs> It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And there was his dead body. I was in shock. What I saw was naturally exactly the same as in I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. You 
poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of a crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Rio? She is one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. As well as the body. <clears throat> yes, I know. I will what the fucker. <clears throat> In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontation. You should disrupt her pacing. Disrupt her pacing. She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking, so you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense, is the instant this trial is over, understand? Okay, so whip out my dick on her and just... Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> so we did it all. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, one wants to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show is supposed to be a show of friendship. and 
not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some very strong, decisive evidence. I just have a tell you. Speak up. 
Miss Andrews. I'm convinced that as you said you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Huh. Actually, so was I. I... I'm sorry. It's just... It's kind of... Embarrassing. When I... When I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. She's definitely working the mill bonds, that's for sure. Flower vase! Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? Yes, that one, right there. It's massive glass shards! It was originally on top of the dresser. But when I bumped into it with my elbow, so, onto the guitar case. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light you. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal your reveal to your testimony. Sorry. I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. I was the one who knocked the flower vase over, where it fell onto the guitar case. In that case, you're saying this right here. I say, Idioti! You testify that you knocked the flower vase over. Is that is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? Is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews. You testify that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. That's very true. Furthermore, 
There is one other strange thing about this guitar case. And what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with us? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, The glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. <gasps> what is your point, right? That the case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over. Is that all? You got it! No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vest, she didn't touch anything else. <clears throat> yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. <laughs> But, but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end! The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. That may very well be, however... Uh, the the, the, the turtles does seem to have no relation to a case, doesn't it? It seems that there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Let's make your test. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. Alright, I'll follow along for now. Ms. Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. Clearly, because I was busy. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal, though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. It looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. Um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Using any way to change the topic, a convenient escape for a weak man.
So you're saying this right here. You got me. This right here. This right here. There is no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. Walters and Miss Andrews. You shouldn't assume that I must have left Prince just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves. But why would you be wearing gloves all the time? It was the night of the award ceremony. So of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of crime. All right, hey, that's strange. If you were wearing gloves, wait, wait, you were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Yeah, um, this right here. Could I? I have your proof right here in my pants. I mean, <clears throat> this wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Uh, uh. Even if you took your gloves off, when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just strange? A little strange. That you put your glove back on just to open the guitar case. <gasps> ah! Wow, broke her glass, and she got, and she got back up. <laughs> broke her glass and like, oh, hold, hold on, spare. That's one spare. Order! 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 Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. Hmm. What do you mean? I believe that guitar case plays a very important role here. But it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. But, but, but the guitar... The bright red guitar was at the studio! Ryo, drop all of your presumptions and your pants. Hmm? What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar.
I admit it would be a natural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that on the case... Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court to, <coughs> steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into a misguided injury, bitch. <coughs> no, your honor. Please recall that Miss Andrews has testified that the bank fell onto the guitar case. Which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it was wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten as to why that guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Oh. Can you do that, Mr. Wright? that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing. You, you, you don't mean to suggest that a bright black guitar was inside the... I'm sorry, we're not playing, we're not playing Hakaider, I'm sorry. So, you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty. Is that it's right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Defeat that head of yours! You haven't proven anything yet! Now then, let's have it. What was inside this case at the time of the murder? important is what is in that picture, Your Honor. In, in this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. 
What I am proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai! The hero's very own costume! What? she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let... Mm, after all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? anything to support such a preposterous idea. Just outside the door was an investigative photo photographer. Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big stupid. And in the end, she managed to get this shot. Correct? You... You mean this photo? inside a costume. Wait one second, you wanna... The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Madame God's. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case of all places, That is a little bad thing. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your voice. What was this Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? Miss Mr. Ongard did not take off his costume. Mr. Ongar did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nikko Samurai costumes at the Gate One Hotel? Yep. Yes, that is what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? 
It would mean that the victim himself had brought the spare to the ceremony on purpose. But, but, but why? The victim, Mr. Cordo, was the German ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nicol Samurai spare also with him? What could be the reason behind such a particular act? And there lies this point. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? No! I just... Mm. Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the nickel samurai spell costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer, and then answer with custom. I believe in you. what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was... On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up right. But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ungard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how could that be? The way I see it, that can mean only one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida himself. The, the, the victim! Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corda's, Mr. Corda was going to hold the press conference as the Nickel Samurai. He was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai and roll the coverage. But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet, however. What I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about him. Which means that Juan Corrida, posing as the Nickel Samurai,
was going to speak about Matt Ungald. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But, if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. Wording, y'all. Wording. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros of what you do. Pardon me? Yes. Just as you say, the press conference was set up by one. <laughs> Miss Andrews! Please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him, that was also me. You! Juan had bet everything on the German Ninja this year. And if he lost to... And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. He was going to ruin him, Mom. Huh? It looked like somehow Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? of Mr. Ongar's Miss Andrews. That's something only one knew. I... I don't know what it is. Ah, I see. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone. But I take it in the ass. What? <clears throat> but that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt after all. P protect Mr. On Guard? Another strange bit of the truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill one no matter what. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager. So I felt that I had to protect him. This does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If the defense can find no fault with this testimony, I am ready to make a ruling. Please keep that in mind as you cross-examine Mr. Wright. Looks 
looks like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to fight my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. I have pressing involved. So, would you say that, so would you say this need came from the press conference? Why Juan chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved, Matt Ongar. And you moved this plan, did you miss it? Yes. Because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. I'm sure Mr. Ongar himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he did know about the press conference? Anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Miss Andrews, please correct your testimony, please. Grasping out strong now, are we, Mr. Wright? I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. Has Mr. Ongar done something to hurt or betray you personally? He has a tiny dick. Huh? Why do you ask? It, you were the one who helped Mr. Cordo with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. Ongar, yet you still helped out. The person on trial right now is Mr. Ungard Wright. What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with its plan, is none of our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this, Dershaw? But didn't you already testify earlier that Matt Un that <clears throat> But didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. Ungar was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Mr. Ungar? I'm not telling you any of anything of the sort. When I was when I went to get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I could, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. I keep trying, but I can find no fault for what Miss Andrew has said. 
I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, I don't know. But George is crying straight at me. He's crying at you, smart guy. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and, mur and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the the and during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the German in his costume. You're talking about this button, Rick. The button was found in the piece of Matt Takama. Isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive, isn't it? <laughs> Looks like you were uh, out of again, Mr. Wright. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing! Please, fix your testimony! I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept it. Thank goodness, man, I can still look at me. <clears throat> With an icy stare, yes. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Rice's sake, please add this information to your testimony. The button was torn off at... The button was torn off of one during his fight with Matt. And how do you know that? When the ends of threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly, or so I heard. Don't look at me like that. Just because I'm prepared and you're not. <clears throat> I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But What you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Oh, yes, Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back of the horse? This witness could have disclosed things about Mr. Ongard at any time. Why then, why then would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason why Mr. Corda planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause Mr. Ongard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards the defendants. This isn't the Phoenix Wright Wax Philosopher Power Hour. What? <laughs> and please, 
stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss Andrews testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me, it sounded a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess I'll see if I can press a little more. You should know this by now. But you'll need strong, decisive evidence to make it possible. Got it, Chief. I'm going to pin you down this time, Miss Andrews. And I'm going to fuck you right up the hoodle. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does this mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Which would mean that it was ripped off of the costume. When? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly. Which means it is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ah. That's right, Miss Henry. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body.
We now know this button was not torn off during the fight. So, the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright! Does this mean... <clears throat> Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Ungard. There is no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That, that sounds real. You know, um, I'm just going to just flip that and flip that. Because that, that one right there, that, that stands as wrong. That's right. Mr. Ungard was set up. By the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is? Uh, well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer in? down yet, not until the very end. The real killer. The person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard. That fine looking fox right there, standing in front of us. Adrian Andrews. I choose you. You are Mr. Cordas Killer. What? There's who? Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. But how preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me. Oh, but I can stick something up your ass. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, 
Then what about the knife? What about that knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. That's three. There's your spare. <laughs> How many glasses are you carrying on you, babe? Then... What... What about the body that was found in Matt Takaba? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only person, uh, the only people who could have done so were the person who found the body or the killer. However, if Mr. Ungar was the real killer, there is no way he could have put such incriminating evidence in his own hakma. Ah! That's four. <laughs> Again, how many glasses are you carrying? The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungar's hakma is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of the evidence that incriminates Miss Andrew. Mighty fine backside, that's a damn true. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, I. Guys, take a pick of that. But Miss Andrew's fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And you can prove that she was not wearing gloves at the time. That, that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any if anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid and to, so to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, 
she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. That's fine. And to top it all off, there's this photo. A photo of the killer as they exit the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. Ongard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that pose is kind of sexy. Real sexy if, if he really just takes the top off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature on your mouth. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? I got her this time. I'm vulnerable. <laughs> Miss Andrew? Hi. I... I... I refuse to test the fact. What was that? Th there's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it can't incriminate me. Well, yeah. Absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self incrimination by allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to the sentence. Not the door! Within the film, it's not just a mostly for what you think they do on this one. Adrian Andrews. Yeah. Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood. What's wrong, Ryan? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence. <laughs> what? 
What are some rumors, Mr. Edgewell? I tell you, realize this is all the honor. But everything the good lawyer has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to prove a single piece of definitive. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Coldar. Miss Andrews, you did you want to kill Mr. Coida? I believe this may lead me. I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There is nothing to prove it, either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taken to find her shoot again! Chiaru! What should we do? Somehow... We've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify. And the defense theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But... So, in this situation, there is only one thing this court can do. And that is to declare a recess. R recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial... Tomorrow? We don't have a tomorrow! If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... <gasps> Mateo! Please, wait, Your Honor! That's not necessary! The trial! Please continue the trial! What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... That's not it! This isn't about that! Edge you up! I know you know who the real killer is! Please, let the trial continue! If I don't get the verdict, then... My... But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, this court is...
it is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgewolf! What are you... It's true, Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing that I am curious about. Miss Andrews, do you suck dick? <laughs> Sorry. Um. <clears throat> when you found when you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. <laughs> yes. And I can't help but think how unnatural that is. One find a body. They are shaken up, not stirred, a glass of juice. I get what you did. I, I like what you did there. So, my actions were unusual, but I love it. Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? <laughs> Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edward today, but I can't get a good read of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request, Miss Andrews, if you please. She pulled one for her home <coughs> Why do you say so in your own testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Jane, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Now then, 
Mr. Rice. You may begin your cross-examination. When I found the body, And how did you come to realize that he was, in fact, dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down and on the dresser and tried to take it from him. I, I was shocked and staggered back. And knock the flower vase over. So that's yes. This is what it all comes down to. Ha. This is the absolute end for both sides. And Adrian is letting our guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance yet to kill the proposition's case. when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corda's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that this... Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that here was a dead man. 
Um, that. Well, I doubt a single person in the, I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone crazy. And then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your point is Miss Andrews. Your testimony just now, it was one giant lie. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to life. The defendant, Mr. Matt on God, is not guilty at all. That, but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. was Matt! I swear! It. He's the one who killed one! But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... Put it above him. What? I refuse to testify. I think then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Madam God's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is it over? Have we have we found the truth at last? What's wrong with you? You sleep. Well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone has it. Now then, I would like to hand now my very for Mr. Matt on God. The prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. <laughs> this witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth.
the absolute real truth. What are you? Witness. Don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head. But as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matt on guard will go free. And in his place, <laughs> you will become the guilty party. by gripping tightly onto the words of another because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was taught a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word no matter what happens. If you do, Matt Ongar will be acquitted. It's Andrews undoubtedly believes in those words right now and is clinging on to them. Then what should we do? This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. Yes, Your Honor. The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to say? Yes, Your Honor. Right! I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did, and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Come now! What will you do? What kind of man are you? Phoenix Wright? Well, 
enforcer. To get down on all fours. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews! I would like to know what you are really hiding! M Mr. Wright! Are you sure you know what you're doing? Hell no! Sure! Mr. Ungard will get an acquittal. But in his place, you will be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want this trial to end? You're trying to trick me! That's enough. I commend you for trying, Miss Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense theory is the truth. What a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this. However, what is it, Miss Edwolf? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to discuss this to the court. This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrew. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you! If people find us, if people find them, I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me.
However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your still breathing lips, and then I will drop those panties on I mean, No matter what I have to do. Will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? I was trying. With the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious to pin the blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man. What do you mean by all this? It might be. It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt. That scumbag of a man. I'll never forget him. He's trying to escape his guilt again. Just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Coida, in the chest with the knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. No, 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 no. How is this possible? I mean, <coughs> wasn't this Andrew supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over it and commence with this, 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 I can't even say it, <laughs> the cross-examination. Get over it and, 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 and get on with the cross-examination, yes. Because there's nothing you can do, it's just like, uh, huh. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm with Venus on that, like, it's, what, the, wait, 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 that, what?
but you could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you said that you didn't know he was dead? had a scarf tied around his neck. But that scarf is part of the Jam Ninja's costume, so I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face at that That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the I knew right away the murderer was me. I knew because one, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak points to the world. So Matt did this to stop one and silence him for good. That's when I thought. I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the box. The first thing that came to mind was the plant the knife. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over I thought that if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume and Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I sit in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. You were the one who prepared that costume. 
weren't you? Yes. I took it from Global Citizens. I also put it in one guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes. One wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is his secret? that if I were to leave one's room in the nickel samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, you went back to Mr. Ungar's room and planted the bottom. Into my Hakama. Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt on guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we cannot be certain she is not the real killer. Wait! Your Honor! The defense still... in time. It is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points her to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But... Mr. Edgeworth, please, place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. 
understood, Mom. The prosecution will arrange for a detention immediately. That is all. Court's done. For today. I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I ask you something? Hmm? Richie? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this. Mr. Wright also asked you about this. Although, I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on the day. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room. That day. Yes. I found this card when I discovered one's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it is not as if this card has any relevance to one's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card, if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Mateo! Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Worth? Do you have any idea what you are stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! I'm 
never seen an integrated song in motion before. Just ends. What had to be the most mind blowing experience, second to none, when I had to do a second time around. Excuse me. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop here. Alright, to save. And in the next part, we go into. Investigation. So stay tuned. More of Justice for All revisited right after this. Thanks so much for watching.